on tune in, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blur Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Foop, joined by my co-host, Ron. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you geeks, dorks, and dweebs are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications for future uploads, and engage with us in the comments. Let us know what you thought about Netflix Geek Week and this episode. All right, all right. So as Ryan has already alluded to, we are here to discuss the highlights and trailers from Netflix Geek Week. Netflix Geek Week started, I believe, September 16th and then went to the 19th. And then on the 19th with the big showcase that they had in Atlanta where they gave some trailers, teasers, and announcements to some of our highly anticipated uh, shows coming for the remainder of 2024 and 2025. Just going down the list of what we're going to be discussing today, Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2, The Devil May Cry Animated Series, mm-hmm. Sakamoto Days, The Witcher's Sirens of the Deep, One Piece Season 2, and Arcane Season 2, and Tomb Raider The Legend of Laura Croft. There are some additional announcements that we'll talk about at the end, but... Let's go ahead and get into it. So Avatar The Last Airbender, um, the actors who play Zuko and Sokka uh, announced the actress who is going to be playing Toph for season two, Mia Check. They also announced that season two is currently in production and we got a 48 second teaser into what Toph's feet are going to look like. <laughs> they look a little, <laughs> they look a little too groomed. I was like, I expected them to look worse than that. Like dirty? Yeah, like they look like she ain't fresh out the, you know, she ain't got like a fresh pedicure or nothing, but I was like, mm, they look a little too clean. I expected her nails to be hanging, be a little brown or something, a few calluses down you- there. You expected some nasty ass feet. <laughs> she walking around barefoot all I, day. I feel you, but like She's supposed to be having blisters down there. Come on, man. Out of all of the things that I expected you to say in regards to that teaser was not that her feet was too clean. I'm sorry. Toph, I just imagine that her feet look like a wildebeest foot. Like, I feel like it should like a bear paw down there. I just don't. I'm sorry. If this is a live action, do it right. I mean, if she got a... <laughs> I just... I feel like, look, but in the animation, because it was animation, her feet went, like, disgustingly dirty. Food, tell me how your feet gonna look if you walking through mountains, barrels, But dirt. I'm just saying, if my feet are supposed to be my eyes, I gotta keep my feet clean, so she won't clean her feet. So you be cleaning your eyes? Your eyeballs? You be cleaning your eyeballs? I mean, I wash my face, I make sure I get the crust out of my eyes in the morning. You 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 don't go run around forest or badger moles and digging through the ground just having fun. Your 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 parents ain't abandoned you. Well, they ain't I, abandoned her. She kind of ran away from them. I just feel like, what does that have to do? <laughs> Before we get too far into like, feet hygiene, what does that have to do? <laughs> what does I, that have to do? I just feel like that has everything to do for live action. <laughs> look I just I don't know how to so I wasn't expecting you to say that I was expecting you to be like you know I'm curious to see what they're gonna do are they gonna make up for how we felt about season one not her feet too clean listen 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 I'll do the real stuff sorry y'all hopefully Foop doesn't clip that out and put it on social media and have me looking like a foot fetish guy I just might. <laughs> I can see you doing it. I, I wouldn't be mad. It makes sense. But no, it looks good it, graphically. That We never had any complaints about Avatar Netflix's um, graphical ad- adaptation when it comes to the effects and everything. Mm-hmm. I just hope that the story doesn't move too fast. The book two is where we start to get into more of the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. Book one was more of an introduction. Now we're starting to see a lot more characters. We're starting to see a lot more of the story breakdown. I hope we actually see Aang learn how to bend. I we I think in our review we talked about how are they going to handle water bending, be, being that they made Katara like the boss chick, 
and Aang just over here swinging air around and doing mm-hmm. nothing. So I'm wondering how they're going to handle all of that in season two. Yeah, they have a lot to handle in um, season two. I think it's... Were these eight episode seasons? Was season one eight episodes? It felt like it if it wasn't. Was it? Let's let me see. Cause if it was, I know we constantly talk about like we deal with House of the Dragon, why these folks ain't getting cleared for ten, twelve, et cetera episodes, but mm. season yeah, it was one had eight episodes. Stuff. So it's eight episodes. So if they continue with season two with eight episodes, and I feel like we knew this information. I feel like when they first announced season two and season three, they said it was going to be eight episodes. But I definitely agree with you. They have a lot to cover. One, the whole making up for the Aang not learning waterbending situation in book one. Mm-hmm. Toph being being introduced into the season. And then let's not talk about Azula's whole thing. Like There's major developments on both the heroes and the villain side. Like even Zuko starts to have his um character development. We start to see him having his change from, you know, where he was in book one into book three. They have a lot to cover in book two. And if they're gonna continue with eight episodes, I hope they learn their lessons. They listen to the feedback, the constructive feedback from season yeah. one and make season two you know, worth watching. They said it's in production, so I'm excited to see, like, when the full trailer comes out um, and the release date, so. I ain't gonna lie. The biggest announcement they can make that'll make me happy is if the showrunners are like, hey, we built a relationship with the original creators back in Nickelodeon, and they're working with us again. That would make me go, okay, y'all really finna make up for y'all mistakes now it's like i don't know because they ain't going to put unless they like kind of show it off in their marketing that hey we're not just trying to hit the big points and then hide the ones that the fans really want to see we're really finna there's no way they can do that in my opinion without us actually watching it unless someone makes an announcement i doubt they're going to do that yeah i'm curious yeah we're definitely going to get um interviews we're going to get first looks behind the scenes like it's going to be the same, if not more, of the buzz that we were getting before season one came out. Because book two is just, it's a lot to cover. Mm-hmm. Them announcing that they uh, found the actress for Toph. That's great. We go ahead and get that on, out the way. And now it's just, now that we got that out the way, now it's like, what's the focus points? What are you guys' focus points for this season? Exactly. And that because y'all are already left out like the my biggest issue is I, I can't remember if you predicted it. I predicted it or if we just both was like that might be what they do. <sighs> are they going to do a skip for Aang and he just no water bending and we not see any of that? That's what you were saying. You were saying that that first episode might be Aang knowing how to water bend and we just have to fill in the blanks that between the last episode of season one and the first episode of season two, he learned how to fully water band yeah or they might do like a 10 second montage of him and Qatar running through the oceans and then it's like ah we we missed all of what book one was about (laughs) i could see them doing that only because there's a lot of characters coming into play for book two Mm -hmm. like um book two anime animated wise was we got more info on may more info on ty lee the whole Earth Kingdom thing, the whole Dai Li thing, then Toph, her family, uh, Iroh and Zuko, their whole dynamic with being on the run. Mm-hmm. It was, I don't know. And, and it's interesting. I want to see how they handle Azula because we, I think we complained about how they kind of showed her really early in the season one. Or, like, rather, they kind of held back that menacing aspect that she has, and we don't know how they're going to handle it in future seasons. Because this is where she drops in, and she's just right. this wicked murderer. Like, <laughs> like there you are, everybody is supposed to fear her, even Zuko. So I wonder how they're going to handle that in season two, since they've taken a lot of creative freedoms with the writing. Yeah. I would be curious to see how they build her up, because as alongside season two being Toph's season, this is also Azula's season. 
just because mm-hmm. of what you said. Like coming out the gate, first episode, being introduced to Azula, all of the moves that she made, all the way up to the point where she basically conquered Bon ba- ba- Sing Say. Like that, that was her season. Mm-hmm. So with her, I didn't mind them showing her early, but I definitely get the criticism or the complaint that it kind of takes the edge off once we get to book two based on how she was introduced in the animated series. Exactly. And it's like Toph is already like an edgy character to a degree, like the one who goes against the grain, goes against the norm, more expressive, etc. So now it's like, is she going to be the only one playing that role? Because I was going to be Azula for a good minute. It was finna- it was really supposed to be a battle between her and Azula. Like Toph is like chaotic good, Zula's chaotic evil. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see what they're going to do with it. I definitely it. I they have a lot of pieces that are going to be moving in book two, and the eight episode thing is just is is really killing me. And I I get budget. I get that it probably takes. I don't know how many millions of dollars to do all mm-hmm. the CGI for the bending, the animals, the locations, and things like that. But I think you said this in our review too, or maybe it might have been the episode after that, that um maybe book two should have been split up into two parts. It may sound unfavorable. It may not sound like it's, you know, tradition because how the animated series was split up, but the animated series 20 episodes, 20 plus episodes out the gate. Like they were able to have like filler episodes. If we're going eight episodes in this live action and we have to touch, or if you want to touch every piece of content from the animated series, I don't know if eight episodes is going to be enough. Hell, book one for the live action should have been two seasons, in my opinion. Honestly, I don't know. I could have maybe taken. A couple more episodes of book one. I don't know. I don't know about two seasons of book one. So you think they would have just been good with like ten or twelve episodes? They would never. They would never need a sixteen. If, if they did ten, I think they could have made it work because. How long were those episodes again? Were they hitting? They were like some minutes. They were like hour, like an hour long. Okay. Okay. I can see what you're saying, Dan. Okay. But, like, book two, the only reason I'm saying that book two may have to be split up because we just have so much to cover. There's so much to cover before we get to book three with, like, Sozin's Comet, the stuff that happens at Boiling Rock, and things like Mm -hmm. that. Like, book three is basically handling the effects that happen at the end of book two. Right. Huh. I don't know. I'm a... mm, Like, if I had to... If I had to give, like, my final opinion, I'm not the most excited about it, but I'm not. I'm definitely going to watch it. But, like, what did we rate it in season? What did we rate season one? Like, a 7 out of 10-ish type of rating? 70% something? I think we gave it a... We might have given it somewhere between an average and solid. It was somewhere in between there. Yeah, like, I'm still going to watch it, but out of all this stuff from Geek Week, that's not the thing I'm most impor- excited about by any means. Yeah, I know they had to give, like, an update, because, mm-hmm. like, the way that it went up on Netflix. I know they had to give an update, but I, I'm i going to save any other anticipated thoughts for Avatar <laughs> Season 2 until we get a full trailer. She said, we don't want to start this episode off too negative. Let's do some positive <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but going into the, um, starting with some of the animated series. So we're getting a Devil May Cry animated series that's being adapted from the well-known video game franchise. It's coming out April 2025 and it's supposed to be set somewhere between the first Devil May Cry game and Devil May Cry 2. The anime studio over this is Madhouse, which is responsible for Hunter x Hunter. Some of One Punch Man, Death Note, and Fearin. Freerin. Freerin? Uh-huh. That's a good animation studio. That's a really good animation studio. The, the trailer look, looks nice, though. I like that Netflix is stepping heavy into this animation bag. Like, some of the announcements that we've been getting, 
some of the projects that they have lined up, I've been like, okay, Netflix, like, I wouldn't have thought of like a Devil May Cry animated series. Terminator Zero, I'll get to that at a later date, but like the way that they did that, it's solid. I have some complaints, but like the way that they did that, I was like, okay. Then we got Tomb Raider that's about to come out. Um, I'm trying to like go back, like how they did um, Tekken, they did Tekken Bloodline, but I just feel like this year and going forward, um, Netflix is really stepping into their animation bag. Yeah, cause it it looks good, but I if I had to throw out a hot take, I'm surprised Max ain't holding it down when it comes to the animations and keeping up with Netflix right now, being that they're the ones with all the DC comic based animations and Cartoon Network and everything. But that's a side note. It looks good. I don't have much of an affinity or a familiarity with the Devil May Cry video games. I've always seen the trailers. They seem to always be like a solid Ninja Gaiden-esque fighting game. When it comes to action-adventure game where it's like you kill bundles and herds of enemies with big, colorful abilities. I might check it out. It looked good. It looks like one of those things where if I finally buy a Netflix subscription and like you say you liked it, I'll go check it out. If it catches my eye, I'll stick to it. Mm -hmm. But it looked good. I trust that studio to do something solid and do justice by the franchise for the fans. Yeah, I'm going to check it out just to see, you know, what it's about. It looked, mm-hmm. it looked interesting. Next, we have Sakamoto Days. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people on my TL excited about this. Um, it's dropping January 2025. The anime studio is TMS Entertainment, who is responsible for Detective Conan, Fruits Basket, and Dr. Stone. Um, the trailer, about those. the trailer looked interesting. It had that fun, it's, it's action packed, but it has like that fun style, uh, animation. So I was like, okay, I feel like I could sit here and watch this and be like fully entertained. It doesn't feel as gritty as some like Hitman style animes are. So a lot of people in the anime community are saying this and Don da Don and something else I can't remember, are finna be like the new generation of Big Three Shonen since My Hero and Everything's ending. Mm -hmm. But the only uh, um, uh, um, experience I have with Sakamoto Days, the manga community loves this. Yeah, that's what I was saying. mm -hmm. Like, similar to Chainsaw Man, I knew about Sakamoto Days for like over a year now, probably two. Like, Battle Shonen fans love it. Action fans, if you're if you're upset that a lot of these shonen animes are coming to an end, the mangas are coming to an end, it seems like this is going to hold you over alongside Don to Don and a few others. Like it seems like it's going to get that it's going to fill in that void if you got it. I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, so yeah, I I haven't been mad about the anime the anime projects or animated projects that Netflix has been announcing. So next we got The Witcher, Sirens of the Deep. And we talked about this last year when they first announced it at 2023's Netflix Geek Week. Um, Here they just gave um, some additional information and an exclusive clip into a conversation between Geralt and Yaskier. Yaskier? Yaskier. Yaskier. I think you say Yaskier. There it goes. Um, So the release date for that movie is February 11th, 2025. We still don't have an announcement for the live-action Witcher Season 4. But, fun fact, Doug Cockle, the original voice actor of Geralt in the Witcher video games, is going Mm -hmm. to be voicing Geralt in the movie. Really good callback. Really good callback. I heard his voice and I was like, this is beautiful. I believe the actress who plays Yennefer in the live-action series is supposed to be doing the voice of Yennefer in the movie, too. I'm not mad at that because she was a good I she, for what the, for the material she had to work with she did a good job uh, like I, I actually like her the, the actress for her just like I like Henry Cavill yeah I it looks good I is this a hot take to say that Netflix has done better with the Witcher animated stuff more than they live action stuff even though it was just that what one film or one series what was it it was just that one movie I liked it more than the live action stuff overall. The live action has had a long time to disappoint me, but I'm mm-hmm. excited to see what they do with this. Yeah, the the animation stuff has to have just because of that first movie, and I can't remember the name of it. Wolves, um, or something? something, something. The wolf. Was it just the wolf? 
no, it wasn't the wolf. It was like something, something, the wolf or wolf, something, something. But either way, that movie, <laughs> that movie was great. That mm-hmm. that movie was nice. Um, it filled the gap between when we were waiting for, I believe it was The Witcher season three. Yep. It filled the gap. So I feel like this movie is going to fill the gap while we wait for season four. But I definitely agree that if this movie, if I like this movie as much as I did the first one, I would probably agree that Netflix is handling the animated content for The Witcher better than the live action series. And I, I don't know. I didn't do too much research of like who's handling, if, if it's all the same group of people handling the franchise itself, or it's just like, you guys focus on the live action and you guys focus on the mm-hmm. animated stuff. And that's why we're getting like these two different approaches to the content. I feel that. And and I'm interested to see what story they're going to follow because it's similar to the One Piece discussion. Like, the Witcher already has the books, the video games, the live action, and now the animated series. Are y'all going to tell the same story the fourth, for the fourth time? Because I thought, even though the first movie showed Geralt as like a little child, because Witchers already live longer than humans, I was like, maybe they're still going to focus on his trainer. And we're going to see him live his life for like the next 50 to 150 years. Mm-hmm. And now we're already seeing Geralt as a full grown adult. I was like, huh. Is or this is what we're finna deal with? Or is it possible that they could just be telling different stories inside of Witcher lore? Like, the next animated movie that comes after this may not be focused on Geralt. They could, because I think the books tell various stories that don't necessarily appear in the video games about Geralt. Mm-hmm. Like, there's different... Like, he's still a monster hunter, so you could easily put him in City A versus Kingdom B. And say how he saved some kid's life and someone fell in love, blah, 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 so blah, blah, blah. So you think they might be feeling, is it, do you think it's possible? And I, I don't know this for sure. Do you think it's possible that they may be animating the pieces of the book that aren't making it into the live action? Probably, because I didn't read the books. Because we, can... we also haven't got the series yet. Like, they, it could be possible. What if, what if the next Witcher animated book focuses on Siri? It could. And like, let's just be honest, people don't read for real anymore. And the Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 games are so old now. The Witcher 3 came out my freshman year, like before my freshman year in college. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a distance away in enough people's minds to where if they tell these stories, they could tell Geralt's early life that showed up in the video games and won't nobody be mad. Or like midlife, because the live action... (sighs) Kind of his midlife, yeah. Because they just switched through time periods in the live action. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be his early life. I'd be curious to see, like, because they said The Witcher is going to end with season five, so I would be curious to see um, will they continue with the animated content despite the live action series being over? Or will they try to spin up some other live action thing and then still have the animated content filling in the void until we have this next season ready? Yeah, because weren't they the ones who said that The Witcher is supposed to be their Game of Thrones competition or whatever when it came to the live action? Maybe they saying, let's see how the animated route goes. I I think, I believe they were saying that because I remember we talked about that a while ago. Mm-hmm. But that was when the plan was supposed to be like seven seasons. And when then they the, started like, getting some backlash and Henry Cavill disagreeing with the showrunners and yeah, stuff. Yeah, when all when everything went down with like the way that the plot was going, the whole Henry Cavill situation, that's when they were like they came when they switched them to Liam Hemsworth. Um mm-hmm. when they were like, Okay, we're gonna stop at five seasons. But the original plan back in like twenty twenty two when season two finished was like they wanted to go they wanted this to go seven seasons, which would have been touching Game of Thrones numbers. Exactly. I mean, huh. I, I, as an animation fan and a cartoon fan, and the way that Netflix is one of the biggest platforms of pursuing animation right now, I'll say, hey, invest even more money into the animation. Like, if this does good alongside the other movie, y'all need to start thinking of a series to drop. Y'all need to get a whole movie, not a, not a, universe like mcu and dceu but y'all need to make start making a plan plan like let's get a mm-hmm. few things down the pipeline ready because this might be a blockbuster 
I mean, they they might like just looking at mm-hmm. all of the announcements. Like to me, this Netflix Geek Week was very animation heavy to mm-hmm. me, and I, with a lot of good announcements at that. So like, I could see if the wave is animated content. Let's take some of these franchises that have been, you know, like you said, been so far removed that if they, you know came back with it nobody would be upset like i think i definitely think it's sounding like netflix is harping on that animation wave it's interesting because we were just now coming to i do you think we're coming to an end or we're still or the end of the golden age for live action adaptations like when disney first started going hard in them and i was thinking that too is are we reaching the end of like the push to make everything live action. Like Netflix has found some gems, like with the One Piece live action. Despite your complaints about the Avatar The Last Airbender series, people still checked it out. People mm-hmm. still deemed it a solid adaptation of the animated series for it to keep pushing forward. Like, I think I I don't know if we're coming to the end, but I feel like we're seeing less and less live action adaptations and the one in the in the golden nuggets the star childs that were able to sonic a few disney movies here and there yeah the ones that were able to push the mold break through the ceiling are the ones that they're focusing on and then Mm -hmm. some of these are like focusing straight heavy on the the animation like the DCU is interesting for sure, not to get too far off topic, but the first official project of the DCU is an animated series. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, I'm all for it. You and me have been saying this for the longest. We've been saying that Hollywood slash the folks who are in the background that write, write the checks for all of these projects needs to focus in on animation. Animation can truly be cinema. People will truly um, pay to see it in theaters or pay for the subscriptions. And I like that Netflix is going um, headstrong in it. I like that they're deciding to go this route. Yeah. I, I'd be curious to see what else they have up their sleeve. Like, I don't think this is the end of animated projects that Netflix has coming up. Mm-hmm. And especially with them pulling out franchises like it's Terminator, Devil May Cry. Um tomb raider i would be curious to see what other franchises they have just sitting in the the folder like we want to announce this yet no it's gonna work okay it's gonna work with sony and do a spider-man i don't know war i don't know who that was or who's like going to be um distributing this project but did you see that stuff about that transformers anime no actually all i've seen is the ads for the one movie no, there's somebody. There's some animation studio that's making a Transformers anime. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it for the next episode. I'm going to find out that information. But I saw it and I was like, Transformers anime. I don't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was Netflix. But tune into the next episode of the Blur Mob Podcast, I, and I will have this information for you. I will watch that before I watch the movie that's coming out. I would be willing to see that. I don't know when it's coming out though. They just announced it. Okay. But once once we get the information, you will know. Y'all will okay. know. <laughs> um, but moving on to One Piece season two. Um, no announcement for the season two release date. We got some additional casting, specifically for Crocodile and Nico Robin. And we got a first look, not a full look, just the back of his head. We got a first look at Chopper. So with all of the castings and everything that's coming up to look at the look at chopper because i know your concern antoine's concern and then ace from girl on otaku council was how they were going to deal with like the cgi with certain characters chopper specifically and then some of the characters coming up in the later seasons does this help with your concerns or do you need to see more i had to honestly pull it back up to look at it and I'm not mad. Um, I mean, like for the hat 
and the antlers, and as crazy as it looked, the antlers actually go through the hat with his ears popping out. Like, the show wasn't afraid to do some wacky stuff in the live action. I'm mm-hmm. like, just from the back, he looked, no diddy, he looked good. He looked good from the back. And in my opinion, I'm excited to see how they do Crocodile and Nico Robin. Because Crocodile is going to be the first Logia fruit user that they've shown. So I'm interested to see how they handle those CGIs and those graphical effects with them. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think I like the One Piece live action, especially hearing it from, you know, you and Antoine and Ace who are, you know, currently consistently watching One Piece. Like, you guys are in it. Y'all with them mm-hmm. on the boat to find the One Piece. But to we hear... finding the One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> but to hear you guys' feedback and, like, having positive, like, you know, being mad that you couldn't find anything wrong about it, like, that it it was, that it felt like One Piece, which is um a tricky thing to do with some live ac- action adaptations to keep it true to the content that you're adapting from. So I'm looking forward to it. And out of all animes, I'm arguably One Piece is one of the worst ones to choose to adapt. I still stand by that. I still don't see how they got it right. But I, I wanted to hate it. Like, for anybody watching who didn't go watch that review, go watch our One Piece live action review. I wanted to hate it. I was like, I don't want to like this. <laughs> I don't want to like this. And it was good. It was actually really good. But I, I wonder if it's like what you said, they just weren't afraid to do the wacky wackiness of One Piece. Because mm-hmm. I think some of the things with live actions, you want to make it as realistic as possible or it's live action so we can't do this, that, and the third. And I feel like the One Piece live action was like, no, nah, we're doing this. I don't care. Exactly. Like, they kept Arlong looking wacky. He didn't have his bad body proportions, but they had the fishmen looking like yeah. advanced, advanced costumes from Power Rangers, but it worked. It freaking worked. They did their kicks. Zoro did his little sword moves. I was like, they made it work. They made it work somehow. So I'm definitely looking forward to One Piece Season 2. I'm definitely waiting for the trailer t- to drop and for the release date because like we talked about on not this past episode, but episode 48, we did talk about how the One Piece is on the way and how they're going to handle that alongside with the One Piece live action. Still interested in what they're going to do with that. I'm not mad at it. I will recommend it to every anime fan, but that's so interesting. I don't know what they're going to do. It's going to work, but I'm interested. We're just going to drop a review for every arc of One Piece now. Yeah. <laughs> but moving on to the next thing, I'm gonna. I would want to talk about Tomb Raider right quick before we get to my my star of the show. I know who's your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> we are all long term fans now. <laughs> But Tomb Raider, we got another look at Tomb Raider, The Legend of Laura Croft that's dropping October 10th. It looks good. It, it does. It, it feels like the games, like I like the um the OG Tomb Raider movies with Angelina Jolie, but this looked true to like the games when I got into, when I had that era of like, I was playing a lot of Uncharted, Tomb Raider and things like that. This felt very heavy video game. Laura Croft. So I'm excited to see what they do. Um, my other thing about Tomb Raider is that they, the way that they tie or twist some historical events inside of the the story of the game. So I'm interested to see what historical aspects they put into this series. And I'm excited for it, but I will say I'm a bit hesitant. Hesitant coming off of Terminator Zero Mm -hmm. and I hope they execute it well my only my only concern is though Tomb Raider looks good I'm excited for it that trailer was a bit too long for my liking and when trailers are like after we've already because this isn't the first trailer to put that out there this is not the first trailer for Tomb Raider I felt like they were showing us a lot and Sometimes I get a bit nervous when you like have to throw so much in my face for a trailer that maybe there's not much there when it comes to the series. I am not mad at that perspective because now that you're saying it, 
It was a lot. You they really focused mm-hmm. on the guy that um Laura had history with trying to kill her and everything else. And I was like, that could have been its own little fifteen second scene if y'all was confident in it, mm-hmm. if we're being honest. So I could see that. Maybe they want to prove something to the video game fans and say, hey, we are staying true to the video games. I don't know. I, I don't know what message they're trying to show. Maybe they just wanted to give you one little last, here's what to expect when Laura Croft comes out. Because I that's like two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. So here's, you know, your last bit of content before the series drops. But it did make me a little bit nervous. Because I was looking at her, I was like, damn, this is kind of long. And for you to be showing me so much, I'm just, I don't know, because I'm going to contradict myself when we talk about Ar- Arcane, but either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me for a loop, because I was like, how do we get from to here from the last, we're we going to get there. We're we going to get there. But you will hear it from me about how Tomb Raider went, about how I feel about Miss Croft, Laura Croft. This is our designated Tomb Raider fan. I'm not mad at it. Because the trailer didn't look bad to me, but I see your perspective. I felt like they did a decent job. If you're going to watch it, I don't think this will take you away from liking it. Mm -mm. Well, going taking the chance to watch it. But it it seemed like that last bit of, y'all really want to know what we're doing? Here we are. Go watch it. Yeah. I feel like maybe we could have did like an exclusive clip, maybe like a sneak peek on like one section of one episode of the series instead of like I think that jump was like two minutes long of just like all of these high heavy action packed moments and you know it could be possible that all of these heavy high action moments that we saw could be the first couple episodes and then the rest of the season and the rest of the season I've never seen before it could just be boring her just walking through the tomb sitting there contemplating like her issues and stuff (laughs) (laughs) it ain't no action man it's, it's going to be some action. It's Tomb Raider. It's Laura Croft. That whole game, like, even when you play a Tomb Raider game, it's straight action from beginning to end. You might walk around and talk to a couple people for, like, the first 15 minutes of the game, but the rest of it's straight action, straight survival. Man, man, a lot of the Netflix um, adaptation is going to have her sitting at the campfire singing the campfire song. Man, she do be sitting at the campfires, though. If you know, you know that save point. It's them campfires. Change your gear. Build your weapons. If you know, you know. C A M P F I R E S O N D song. <laughs> but I'm ready though. I'm I'm definitely ready. Um, but moving on to the star of the show. And 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 before y'all say I'm biased, before you say food, that's just your opinion. I was watching. It is. No, no, because I was watching Netflix Geek Week live in that comment section, that comment section on YouTube mm. was where's Arcane? Arcane, 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 Arcane. Where's Arcane? Have they showed Arcane yet? They knew. They knew. I seen a tweet that somebody said they had to show because they did show Arcane towards the end. They had to show Arcane last because everybody else was going to leave. They was going to leave. Yeah. If they show Arcane first. The rest of Netflix Geek Week was gonna be out the way, and it's the block. It is the true blockbuster. Out of everything they announced, Arcane season two is the blockbuster. Sakamoto Days is for like the manga fans, but this is the blockbuster. I know they tired. I know they tired of me. I know when somebody steps in that episode, they be like, "Damn, food finna talk about Arcane again." Prepare to be sick of me. I told y'all a long time ago when Arcane came back to prepare to be sick of me. But let's get into the announcements from Netflix Geek Week. We finally got the release dates, dates in plural, for Arcane Season 2. It's going to be divided into three acts, similar to Season 1, with Act 1 dropping Saturday, November 9th, Act 2, November 16th, and the final act, Act 3, dropping on November 23rd. Now, they showed us another... Well, I wouldn't say this another. I will say this another. They have been showing some sneak peeks into the season before we had got to that official trailer a couple weeks ago. They showed us another sneak peek into Arcane Season 2. This focuses strictly on Vi and the focusing on that piece in the last trailer where she was like in that fight fighting pit. And we really get some insight of what she's doing in this fighting pit. And my girl is going through it. 
She done, she was she going through her core phase. She done went golf. I, she over here boxing. I'm like, oh, she whooping ass. She whooping ass, and she getting then, drunk. Then, then she, she got to the then end of the trailer. Started, then she started getting wow. her ass whooped. Wow! I was like, dang, man. Well, you I, saw this in your head? <laughs> no, I think she was winning at first, but it it was that moment where she started allu- hallucinating Caitlyn. It got bad, and this is proving my theory. This is further proving my theory. If you, um, I'll explain it a little bit quick, but if you want to hear it in full, hear me ramble in full, check out our trailer reaction to the last um, Arcane trailer. That there's going to be a time skip that they're going to go after Jinx in that first act, and it's going to go bad. And Vi and Caitlyn, gonna, they're going to break up. They want, I don't know, they're not really even together, but... If you lesbians, you know, you know. They gonna break up. And Vi gonna take it hard. And Vi gonna take it hard. And Vi gonna take it hard. And she's taking it. <laughs> she's taking it. <laughs> she said, if you know, you know, you know, if you know lesbians, you know, if you, you know. know. Les- if you know lesbians, <laughs> they they together. Because Ryan will look at it and be like, well, they didn't really say they was girlfriends. Like, the rom- romantic tension was there. But they didn't call themselves girlfriends. They girlfriends and they gonna break up and Vi gonna take that real hard. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. You're you're <laughs> realistically, realistically, I mean... realistically from A to B, you are exactly correct. But you forgot. But the missing ingredient, the chemical X, is that they're lesbians. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest. We all grown. If the, if you ain't got the title, don't assume nothing. You gotta wait till that title drop. Well, she had some. What she had something because the way that Vi is is going downhill in this trailer, I am a hundred percent that there is a time skip. I am a hundred percent that they are going after Jinx in that first act, and it is going to go down bad. I could see that, like, two years down the line. Because it seemed like she built a relationship with the dude. They're not, like, intimate, but, like, he mm-hmm. ha- helping her out, holding her down at the bar, looking out for her. She's in the Undercity. Her. Let's just start there. She's in the Undercity. The mm-hmm. first look we got at Arcane Season 2, Vi was in an Enforcer outfit. Now exactly. we go into here, Vi is in the Undercity. Yeah. And fighting, there's a point- fighting to make a living. There was a point where they had Jinx there, and I'm like, is she hallucinating? Or is Jinx like, Jinx, I got eyes on you? Like, what's I think going Jinx on? Is real. I think Jinx is really there. I and think I wonder if she knows this vibe. I think she she definitely knows that's her sister. At the core, despite, if we pull out all of the complications, all of the issues, the core of Arcane is Vi and Jinx being sisters. That is the mm-hmm. core. So that's like, you know, we not cool. If I show you my face, you might, you know, beat me into a pulp. We might got heavy beat, but you still my sister. And I'm going to show up and watch my sister. I'm going to be there watching over my sister. Make sure she don't do nothing too crazy. Now, you you cutting up a little bit, but, like, we, I'm going to make sure you're not doing nothing too crazy because you're my sister. Mm. That's, that's what it's given to me. I rock with it. I, cause my whole thing is, I'm like, oh, Vi going in, Vi she going is, she in. going dumb. Can we I, talk about the dude? You know who that dude is, right? When she first fought. Who was he? That's the big dude from season one who won. She punched as a kid when she had Vander's iron fist and Ooh. uppercutted him. And then you remember when she ended up in jail, she hit him in the chin again with that lunch tray. That's the same dude. <laughs> I know he's sick. I know he's sick of her. Why can't he ever catch a break? <laughs> he's and, sick of her. And is she in hiding? Because it looked like she dyed her hair black. Is her goal to be in hiding? Or is this just her new um persona? Like, is this still a Vi? Or is she going by, like, b- b- um what's the, another word for black? Blacana or something? Blacana. Really? Vi is short for Violet. So why are saw, you getting black So from? I'm thinking I'm thinking like like bl- black. She's just black. You stop I'm, trying. Thank you. I wasn't trying. I don't. It, do you think it's her? Do you think she's trying? <laughs> I, do you think she's in hiding? Do you, do you think she's in hiding? Or you think she's out and people know this is her? 
I don't know. Based on what I got of that trailer, it I can see it going both ways. That they know this is by, and it's just, you know, this is what you got to do now. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to, you know, keep your head low, go in the ring, fight for money, do your thing. Or it could be possible that she did change her name and dye her hair so she could assimilate to the Undercity. Because if my theory is right, and everybody didn't show seeing her pulling up with those enforcers, it's like, no, nah, you just can't come down here. Yeah, they and, were missing her for real. Right. So it's it could be possible that she's changed her identity, which could be another reason why Jinx is watching her. Because Jinx could be like, I know that's my sister. Exactly. Y'all may not know who this is, but I know I know this is my sister. I can see that. I can see that. It looked good though. It looks good. I am excited. They're going to do I am the second thing that I'm excited for is that before they show this exclusive look, we got a announcement from Haley Steinfeld who voice voices Vi and Ella Purnell, who voices Jinx, that they're going to be doing an after show called The Afterglow, which is going to be similar to how, you remember how they were doing, like, Game of Thrones, and then after that, they will talk to, like, the directors and the actors about everything that went that happened mm-hmm. in the episode. I think they're going to be doing, The Afterglow is going to be that for Arcane. So I would, I'm cool. def, definitely going to be cool. And then based it with, them wrapping up everything in this season, I would be curious to see, like, what were the acting choices? What made you want to emote this way? What made you want to go into this direction? What made you want to tell the story? What made you want to send Vi off the deep end? I mean, I'm interested to see. Hmm. Another wild card. I wonder if she's in debt. Cause like they had the person up there who's like the ringleader for the fight. So I was like, I wonder if she's like trying to pay off a debt. Are they giving her a place to stay, or what? What type of little story beats are they going for in that area as well? It could be she got to pay to keep up, keep her place, and the only money, mm-hmm. the money that she can keep, the little couple coins she can keep, she getting drunk with it. <laughs> now she an alcoholic. Uh, did you not watch the same trailer I did? Maybe she just had one little bender. You no, know what it, it gave like this is a regular occurrence. And then when she started hallucinating Caitlyn and punched that guy in the face, that's when it started getting real bad. Because a friend stopped hanging with her. He was like, see, now you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. She said, fuck you. I don't want to <laughs> be around you anyway. <laughs> so I'm... Um, it's, it, that's giving like act two. This That part right there is giving like act two. I type see situation. That. I so, see that. I'm going to get off my soapbox, though. I'm going to get off my soapbox. But I'll be back. I'll be back in November. Or if they show something else, y'all better hope they don't show something else. Foop said, bye to it, girl. Y'all better keep up. Big, that's big bye. Did you see the muscles? That's that's body goals. I'm going to get back in the gym. You gonna get the all black? Gonna put the put the lines on your eyes. I you. said the muscles, not the face paint. You gotta put it. You gotta bring it all together. Full, f- get the full picture going. Nah, that's all right. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get the body right. Then I'm gonna get the tattoos, and then what we can talk about the face paint. Is Foop going to be summertime fine after Arcane releases? <laughs> Find out next time. Find out next <laughs> on time on the Blur Mob podcast. Mm-hmm. But um. Other announcements, and then we can wrap this up. So, other things that were announced at Netflix Geek Week that we're not so much looking forward to, but definitely keeping it on our radar and making sure that you guys are staying up to date with everything that's going to be dropping this year in 2025. So, we got Squid Game Season 2 that's dropping December 26, 2024. Yeah. Uh, Magic the Gathering, which is supposed to be another animated series. I feel like me and Antoine looked this up, and this is based. This might be another game based. Animated yeah, Magic series. the Gathering is a card game in the same realm as like the Pokemon cards and Yu Gi Oh cards. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. We got Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror season seven is dropping twenty twenty five. We're getting a Splinter Cell animated series. I didn't see a release date for that. One sec. One sec. 
I wish they just dropped a video game. Splinter Cell is actually a really good Tom Clancy franchise. Mm -hmm. Tom Clancy does a decent job with their live action series on Prime, on Amazon Prime. So that might actually be good. But I wish they was just making a Splinter Cell video game. It's about time we get a nice Tom Clancy game. That's not Ghost Recon. You can keep going. Back to you, Foop. (laughs) (laughs) Wednesday Season 2 is dropping 2025. I'm definitely looking forward to Wednesday Season 2. They didn't show too much. Like, they showed a behind-the-scenes look at Wednesday Season 2, but not, like, like a official trailer for it. So when the official trailer drops, you will be hearing from me about how I feel about Wednesday Season 2 and what's going to be coming up for that. And then we have Castlevania Nocturne Season 2 coming January 2025. Okay. So Netflix did announce some scary movies that are coming out um, in October, as well as some games as they're trying to build out their Netflix games platform thing coming up. Um, But if there's anything you guys want us to check out that we did not discuss in this video, let us know in the comments. But that's all I had. What about you, Ron? Foop said I got to watch Uzumaki when it drops. Oh, yeah. Not not on Netflix. It's coming out on Adult Swim on Max. Uzumaki, the four episode event from Junji Ito, was a horror animated anime series. Check out our reaction to the trailer. And in that video, we did say that we were going to check out Uzumaki. So be on the lookout for that. It may just be a social media mob review, or we may do a video on it. We'll see. I need to watch the series on live action. I'm going to start burning some sage in the house. <laughs> Look, like get them demons out of here. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and shut this down. So once again, Ron, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Blur Mob Podcast. Thank you to everybody who listened and watched this episode, whether this is your first time or your 50th time checking us out. It is always appreciated. Make sure to follow us on our social media uh, platforms to keep up what's going on with the mob. We're on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at the Blur Mob. And you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blur Mob Podcast. And make sure you check out those links in the description to find out ways to donate to the mob. Every donation that we get goes towards equipment, software, and everything we do to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. It just looks like a fun time. It seems like my Vox Machina is doing what it does best, keeping it fun, keeping it interesting. Like, yeah, they got pretty good reviews. IMDb 8.4, Rotten Tomatoes 100%. Was this season one or season two that's getting these reviews?